I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know the history. I read history and politics at university. I was very European centric. I just didn't really understand the depths of, of what, what colonialism had done to Australia. I thought I knew and I really didn't know anything. My name is Daniel Gordon. I'm the director of the Australian Dream. The Australian Dream is a documentary about the story of Adam Goods, uh, an Aboriginal Australian rules football player who was racially abused during a game. Just over in that forward pocket is where the incident happened. Turned out the abuser was a 13-year-old girl, and then that set off a whole train of events that ended up with him being booed out of the game. The person that needs the most support right now is a little girl. She's 13. She's uneducated. You know, if she wants to pick up the phone and call me and apologise, I'll take that phone call and I'll have a conversation with that girl about, you know what, you called me a name, this is how it made me feel. I've always been drawn to sports stories, or more accurately, human stories that have a sports backdrop people within the sports, we see them and project them as almost godlike figures that cannot make mistakes. And in Adam's case, it was, you know, we, we project this hero-like status, but also know your place, do not speak out. He, in the minds of some, had committed the great sin, the black man who complains. Suddenly, he wasn't just Adam Goods the footballer, he was Adam Goods the angry Aborigine. People don't like the angry Aborigine. It cuts deep here. It's something that reminds us of a history that we'd really rather leave in the past. There's a really telling moment in the film. He's, he's picking up the ball in the background is a family on the front row and the kids are booing Adam and, and you know, making signs at him. And with the mum and dad there, and I was like, well, that's the next generation. Right there on the front row. I met with Adam uh, and we did hit it off straight away, just on a personal level. We spend a lot of time together on and off camera. I was very aware, I was taking him back to some really dark places that he'd maybe shut away for a reason. Not just the time of being booed, but all the, you know, the abuse that he'd gone through as a child, the abuse that his mum had gone through as a child, and really the abuse that his people had gone through. We felt that the Aboriginal voice had to be front and centre. Um, and we spent a long time talking with Adam, talking with Stan Grant, who was the writer on the film, they guided us all the way in terms of who would be the appropriate person to speak to this, to speak to that. I'd reported the darkest corners of our world. To come back to Australia for me and to hear people booing Adam Goods, what I heard was the echo of our history. Bringing that Indigenous voice was really important. It's not my voice, it's their voice and it's their story. When you sort of scratch the veneer, the surface of what, you know, we as Brits always think is an amazing life in Australia, but actually for the indigenous population, it, it's anything but. In the film, Adam describes Aussie Rules football crowds as sort of you know kicking every every ball, every tackle, every groan. You know they, they, they really are they really are feeling it. We opened Melbourne Film Festival, and there were 2,000 plus people at this screening, and I've never seen an audience participation like it. And when the booing happened, the woman in front of me just booed. And then everyone joined in this sort of counter booing. It was an amazing experience to then see everyone's anger pouring out because these people had lived through 
the booing themselves not that long earlier. I think the biggest thing this film did for me was educate me. I always learn on, on all films that I make. I, I'm, I'm never feel that I'm an expert on anything. And one of the things that we found whenever we've gone anywhere with this film, and we've been to Hawaii, and we've been to London, we've been to um, Amsterdam with the film, as well as Telluride and Toronto, and everywhere we went, someone from the audience would come up to me afterwards and say, that's my childhood on the screen up there. I'm from Brixton, London, or I'm from Amsterdam, I've grown up in the Netherlands, or my parents are from Suriname. I have been racially abused like Adam, and that's my life, and thank you for sharing it. You know, at the beginning we were making this film called The Australian Dream. Is it going to be lost in the Australianness of a very Australian story? But actually, it's a universal story.